Today is day three. The carpet was installed by the installers earlier today while I was working. I'm bringing in my uplift desk. Now this is an L-shaped desk. Uh, it's got a, um, a salmon butcher block top. Um, this section of desk that you see me working under is 60 inches wide and 24 inches deep. Um, the other section comes on this L bracket that I'm sliding into place and I'm going to grab my other wood top and this wood top is 42 by 24. That makes my overall dimensions 60 by 66. I'm getting the uh, wood top reattached to the bars. I needed to disassemble it in order to get it down the hallway. Um, this isn't that heavy, it's just awkward. The uplift desk though is really excellent quality. It goes back together really easily. And uh, once we slide this into place and tighten up the set screws, it goes back to looking the same way that it did when it was in my living room. Now I'm going to wrap up some of the cabling here and get the motors plugged back in and um, just get everything kind of put back together so that I can actually use my motors and drive the desk up and down, get it plugged into the wall. I still have a lot of my looms disconnected as you can see on the back, all these wires hanging below are not how it normally looks. I'm really happy with the carpet and how it turned out. I think they did an excellent job. Uh, it's a thick carpet with a three quarter inch padding below it and the padding is uh, specifically for uh, offices. So it's a high density foam that makes it easier for chairs to roll on. So at this point, I'm going to start getting components and getting them attached to the desk. Um, I clamp in the corners for my desk lamp. This is one of my monitor arms. So we'll get that attached to the backside. Um, these have a giant clamp on the bottom of them that clamps with a uh, six millimeter Allen wrench. So get that tightened up and we'll go and get the monitor next to hang on the arm. My monitor is a Monoprice uh, 35 inch ultra wide. It is a uh, 3550 by 1440 resolution and I have a pair of them. Um, this one is connected with HDMI and a power cord and there is cable management inside the monitor arm that allows the cables to be tied up nicely and allows the monitor to be moved around on this arm as I see fit. Um, secure that below the desk and get it all tied up and then everything stays clean and the monitor can move around freely um, as you want it to. The second monitor arm is the same as the first. These came from Uplift when I ordered the desk. Uh, they were relatively expensive if I remember right, but they work really well and they hold the high weight of the curved 35 inch displays that I have really well. Um, again, bolting it to the bottom of the desk using some uh, six millimeter Allens that are included with the mount and making sure that it's nice and secure to hold the heavier monitors. Get the cables pulled up and routed through. Um, this one has a power cord and a uh, USB-C to display port cable for the second monitor output on my Mac mini, which is mounted under the desk. Get the monitor hung here, uh, plug it in, make sure that it powers on, get the cables routed through the routing. Um, the bottom is a slide on clip and the top uh, cover screws in in the monitor arm. So now we get the monitors positioned and really for this, um, I kind of go back and forth quite a bit. I want the monitors to be touching each other um, at the center and to have as small of a bezel as possible. So it'd be as tight as possible. I also want the curve to appear to be continuous. So here I'm on my phone looking at some pictures that I took in the living room before I disassembled everything to see the placement for the monitor arms and just making sure that they line up as well as they possibly can. I spent quite a bit of time on this in my living room the first time I put this together. So here's my final placement and overall I think that it looks really good. The curve is pretty continuous from left to right um, and I end up with, uh, it's like 65 inches of display. These are Dyn Audio LYD5s. They are a studio monitor speaker that I really love. Um, the left one is here underneath my left monitor and the right one goes to the uh, right side of the corner of the desk. Um, they're not exactly equal distance from me, um, which I I'm not crazy about, but unfortunately, uh, with the desk and the layout and the monitor heights, I only have so many options. Um, I am going to be swapping out my cables, the XLR cables that connect to the speakers and the subwoofer. The subwoofer is a Dynaudio Sub 9S, and the XLR cables I get from a company called Pro Audio LA, and they custom make them in a length and with uh, colors to match uh, whatever I request. Um, so I'm routing those here through a cable loom that's going to go up uh, next to the leg of the desk and connect to my um, audio interface as well as to the speakers. 
I like the custom length cables because they make it really easy to do cable routing and not have a bunch of extra slack that you then have to tie up at the ends of the cables or try to bury under a piece of trim or next to the leg somewhere. So here I'm just chasing the loom down the end of the desk and I'm tying it up with zip ties. Um, I use uh, zip tie mounts. They're a uh, flat black plastic uh, screw on mount. I'll put a link in the description and I use zip ties that cut flush so that they do not have a tail coming off of the end. I'll put a link to those in the description as well. And that allows me to um, hide all of the cables uh, back behind the rails of the desk and in front of the giant power strip that I have on the back side of the desk or just, you know, but between the edge of the desk and the rails on the um, return side. Uh, so the cable is really um, unable to be seen unless you get down and look underneath. And even then it's in a really nice clean loom. Here I'm just adding the cables for my uh, camera uh, that I use for Zoom meetings and the light that sits on my monitor that again I use for Zoom meetings. Sometimes when you've got a dark background, it makes it easier to light up your face and make it so that you look more professional when you're in a Zoom meeting. Um, I use them for work all the time and I unfortunately have to be on camera. Um, get my computer, keyboard, and uh, trackpad connected. Um, this is the Apple Magic Mouse and Magic Trackpad, which I like a lot, and the Shit Jotunheim, which is my um, audio interface. Um, get that connected and make sure that the sound is playing, make sure my camera's working. You can see my Zoom background there with the uh, F54 Mini Cooper. Um, get my light clamped to the desk and figure out where I want my placement of that to be. Um, I had it further down on the return when it was in my living room, but here that's going to be poking out. I think it's going to look bad. Uh, get the subwoofer connected, um, start playing some music and just make sure that everything is working properly, finish tying up the cables and just making sure that everything is secure. The last step in the desk assembly is installing the horizontal bar that makes this the commercial desk. Um, so this is a, uh, a horizontal bar that has mounts on both sides. It bolts to the leg in the corner as well as the leg on the return side. And there are set screws in the bottom and top of it that make it a uh, fixed length. And it's a nice foot rest as well as it um, provides support for that corner leg just to make sure that it doesn't get kicked out if you're moving the desk one way or another. And it just gives you some extra support. This is a mono price uh, file cabinet that I ordered from them. Uh, it's very simple, it's black metal. Um, it's pretty sturdy, but not you know the best quality thing in the entire world. Um, I just use that to hold some cables, boxes, headphones, um, some other USB cables and accessories. Uh, next, I'm going to start working on the TV. So we're unwrapping the plastic and removing the, um, the side plastics that Samsung puts on it to make sure that you don't put fingerprints on your TV when you're hanging it up. Um, you can see that I've already run my HDMI and optical cables through the walls. They're hung up there below the TV. And we're going to be using those to connect all of our components. Next, I'm going to bring in the um, entertainment center or entertainment stand that I built, which um, I made out of some uh, butcher block. Uh, they're 24 inch butcher blocks. And I did an entire video on this. So if you're interested in it, um, I ordered some threaded rods and butcher blocks and it cost me about $225 to make this. Um, but I think that it came out really well. Um, I've got a PlayStation 5. It's going to go on the bottom shelf. On the um, top is a Shit Vidar, which is a two channel amplifier. Um, next, I've got my uh, shit. Uh, this is a Saga S, but I'm actually going to be using a Sin um, as my preamp. Um, I've got my Xbox Series S, and I've got uh, an Apple TV as well as a Nintendo Switch that are going to be sitting on this stand. Um, one of the things that I did was I ran a HDMI cable for each of the components. So the um, you know, the Xbox, for example, plugs directly into an HDMI. It goes directly into the TV. And then the TV outputs audio using an optical cable. And the optical cable in this video is connected to the um, shit Modi, which is sitting on top of the Saga on the very top rack. Um, that is a uh, DAC that supports either optical, coaxial, digital, or USB. Um, and then it converts that into an analog signal. And I'm really just using the Saga as a volume control. Um, with the SYN, which is what I switched to later, uh, that has optical right on the back of it. It's just one device that does everything and it has a remote control for volume control. Um, plugging in the power cords and getting everything connected and wired into place, I'll run a loom down the back side of this uh, rack as well, just to kind of keep everything as tidy as possible. 
Um, I found that having the right cables um, helps a lot. So if you're doing a project like this, thinking about it in advance, ordering cables that are the proper length um, can help you for not having a, a lot of extra cable that you have to hide somewhere or having cables that are too short and be scrounging for things and ending up with stuff that maybe is too long. Um, starting at the top, and I'm just kind of making a, a, a loom of cables um, down the backside. And I'm using this fabric loom that I also use on my desk. You can see it there on the left. Um, this one is a one inch diameter. It wraps around and um, I secure it with zip ties. Starting at the top and working my way down and just kind of poking out on each shelf with the cables that I need for the component that happens to be sitting on that particular shelf. At the bottom of the rack, I have a uh, PDU, or power distribution unit, that is designed to be mounted in a network rack. It actually has 12 outlets on it. I'll again put a link in the description to the product that I used. There are many like this. Um, I use an APC brand. Uh, I've also used Triplight in the past. Um, again, I'll give you some options in the uh, description. Um, we're just kind of getting everything plugged into that. Um, it's sitting below the rack and it's one single plug that plugs into the wall that powers literally everything that's on this rack. Uh, we also have the speaker wires poking out the side. You can see one coiled up there on the right and the one behind me on the left. Those are a, um, a matched set of 15 foot speaker wires that I ordered from Amazon and again link in the description um, so I wanted to make sure that they were going to be the same length and that they were going to have the same amount of slack and that they were going to be um, as clean as a possible installation they make these in both white and black I have white in a different portion of my house the black ones here are pretty nice and um, as far as speaker wire is concerned they're pretty inexpensive um, they're nothing ridiculous and uh, they're not much more than the sum of their parts, so ordering a uh, built set is nice. Um, that thing with the blinking light that you see me putting in there right now, that's actually the, um, the digital audio sending unit for the um, SVS subwoofer. So it is a wireless uh, subwoofer uh, transmitter. I have that plugged into the um, output on my Saga, and that is going to be transmitting to my subwoofer, which will be sitting in the corner of the room and be connected wirelessly. So we've got the shelf, it's centered below the TV, it's pushed back in the wall, everything is plugged into place. Now we're going to power the TV on, we're going to make sure everything works, we're going to name our inputs, let it detect our devices. You can see that the Samsung TV knows that it's an Xbox, it knows that it's a PlayStation 5, and it also was able to find my Apple TV without issue. Uh, one nice thing about the Samsung TV is it has the ability to control my Apple TV via the remote that came with it, so I can just use one of those remotes. Honestly, the Apple TV has the ability to control the volume from the Samsung TV as well, um, but it's easier to use the Samsung remote because that can control more than what the Apple TV remote can. Um, so we've got the picture mode set. We're just trying a couple different things here, playing some uh, different videos, uh, making sure that the sound works, making sure the Apple TV is outputting in the right format so we're getting HDR content on our TV like we should, logging into some of our apps, um, loading up the Xbox, just making sure that that works properly. Since this is a TV that I haven't used with this Xbox or PlayStation in the past, both of them require me to go through a calibration to make sure that the edges and corners of the screens as well as the brightness settings are correct within my games. So I'm doing that now. I'm really happy with the progress that I made today and I'm hoping that you'll come back and check out part four where we're going to be installing uh, the sound treatments on the back wall behind me. Thank you.